Hello and welcome to the Solar Business with Blaine Bartlett. I am your host, Blaine Bartlett. And folks, we've got a, uh, I say this every time, but I really, really, really mean it this time. <laughs> uh, an incredible gift. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a friend of mine uh, whom I've had the distinct pleasure of actually getting to know much better in the last year or so. Um, I've known of her for some time and I'd met her some time ago. Um, Kim Calvert leads an organization called Dynamite Lifestyles uh, Limited, and they're based out of Ireland. And I'm excited about having her on the show for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is her personal mentor uh, was one of my dearest friends, uh, my wife's dearest friend, uh, Bob Proctor. And she worked with Bob very closely, and Bob actually mentored her uh, as uh, she started launching her career, uh, which was a second career, actually. I mean, she had been uh -huh. a, a clinical nurse specialist um, and was you know, not enjoying her life at all at that point in time. And she took a flyer. She heard something about this uh, crazy guy called Bob Proctor and uh, took a flyer, you know, cashed in her life savings, literally, and uh, flew to Toronto to uh, be at a program. And the rest, as they say, is history. And that was about five, six years ago, I believe. And yeah. today she is the number one uh, consultant in the PGI organization globally. She has just, I mean, she has just gone crazy with the way that she has positioned the work that Bob espoused, but more importantly, her own take on it. And mm -hmm. what she's doing today is nothing short of miraculous for the people that are working with her and her team at Dynamite Solutions or Dynamite mm -hmm. Lifestyles. And so I just want to, yeah, I want to welcome Kim. Kim, it's it's absolute distinct pleasure to have you here. Oh, it, pleasure is all mine, Blaine. I'm really looking forward to this conversation and I'm so grateful, so honored to even have the opportunity. So thank you. <laughs> Good. Well, why don't we just jump in here? Uh, you, there was something in the message that you uh, got that initial tickle uh, that said, Bob, I'm going to go and meet this guy. There's something here. And I want to just touch on that in the context of the soul of business, because you have built this business, uh, mm -hmm. Dynamite uh, Lifestyle, mm -hmm. in a way that speaks directly to the way you keep it and yourself connected to the soul of yeah. that idea of what it could have been. So I'll just give you the floor here. Yeah, well, kind of give us the, the cliff note version, if you will, of how this came to pass. Totally. Well, my goodness. It's been six years. And I suppose the story all began with, as you mentioned, I was a clinical nurse specialist. I worked in the field of psychiatry. So I was working with the mind but I really had no idea what the mind was. Uh, I'm 35 now. And uh, at the time I was 28, I was, you know, went to school, worked hard, got the education, really didn't enjoy school, to be honest. All my teachers, even my business teacher told me, Kim, don't go into business. You won't do well. Um, so I heard all of this sort of stuff growing up. Uh, I was from a beautiful, loving home. Uh, but I'm from a very small little island called Northern Ireland. And, uh, you know, personal development, positive mental attitude, never came across it. And it came to a point in my life where I'm sure many people can resonate that I just, I was stuck. And not only was I stuck, I was stuck in a place of pain. I was broke mentally, financially, physically. In fact, I actually lost my voice for nearly eight months, which I find uh, very interesting now because I'm a public speaker. So there's definitely symmetry there. I wasn't living my soul's purpose at that point. And, uh, you know, finances were not good. Now, being a clinical nurse specialist at the highest level, uh, again, all my, even my tutors at university said, Kim, you'll never, you'll never even get past just being a standard nurse. 
And I kind of was okay with that, to be honest, because I kind of just thought, well, it's a job and it pays and I don't know any different. I'd never had any goals or aspired to do anything. I grew up in a home, actually, that uh, my dad was an entrepreneur. So I was familiar with the concept of business. But because I was a young child, I didn't really uh, understand it or take any heed of it. So it came to a point uh, six and a half years ago where enough was enough. And I was hurting big time on the inside. From the outside, I probably looked like I had an okay life. I had an, a home. I had a good job. I was being paid by the government. You know, I had all these great things going for me. But inside, talk about a soul. I just felt like it had gone. Um, and I don't even really know if that resonated with me back then. I just knew I'm unhappy. And then I had, it was one day I was sitting in my office, a much different office to my office now in the, in the hospital. And I remember looking out the window and I remember seeing the, the trees and the birds. And I kept thinking to myself, there has to be more. I can feel it. But I had no idea what that was. And that was a little bit painful, but also very much, it was almost like it was pulling. There was something inside of me wanted to get out. But my belief around myself was I was unlovable. That was probably my biggest, strongest belief was that I was unlovable. And uh, I didn't think I was smart. I'm dyslexic. I'm rubbish at math. And I didn't do very well at school, despite, you know, I did become a nurse, but that was with a lot of a lot of work and study outside. So um, I kind of was at that point when I was staring out the window, just knowing there was more. And then it was probably a good six months where I just kind of stayed in that place of knowing there's more, but not moving. I didn't do anything with it because I frankly didn't know what to do. I looked at my friends, my family and they were all kind of the same as me and they were happy. They were seemed to be settled and content. And I suppose I got this feeling of, I don't even want to tell anybody that I'm not content because I should be, you know? And uh, so I kind of, you know, that was difficult in my mind. And then it got to a point I was in a pet shop and uh, I was buying my two little Jack Russell's some pet food and uh, I had actually just come out of a very toxic relationship and I had just met someone new and I kind of was a bit hesitant to get into a new relationship. But I was standing in this pet shop trying to buy dog food and I realized in my pocket, I was squeezing my hands in my pocket. And it was one of those moments where you're in a shop, but you're kind of in your own world. Mm -hmm. And I realized because my my new partner was standing there going oh let's get this fancy dog food and I was like I can't afford it and when I took my hand out of my pocket I had four pound 20 to my name yes I had a job yes I had a pension but I was broke <laughs> and at the end of every month I was tired I was more run down I was working more hours in, in the nursing and I had four pound 20. So it was one of those moments where I just knew I've got to make a decision. I've got to make a change and I need to do something about this. And I also had an absolute, I suppose, a knowingness that this was about me. I had to do something. And then I kind of, you know, thought, well, I'm a mental health nurse. I should be able to understand the mind and be happy and you know, I could see all these other people around the world that were prosperous. And in my ignorance, I did think, oh, that only happens in America. And <laughs> it, it, I know, ridiculous, but that's what I thought. And then one day I'm watching YouTube clips and here comes Bob Proctor, this older gentleman I'd never heard of before. And, and I wait. As soon as I heard his voice, as soon as I heard the message, I didn't really understand it. In fact, I didn't understand it. But for some reason, it understood me. Mm -hmm. And there was a connection in my heart that I will never forget and I'll never let go of. 
And I just knew I, I got to go speak to this person. Now, I also knew Bob Proctor was a very famous, in my mind, you know, celebrity person that how on earth is a, you know, a young person like me going to be able to, to get in, in touch. So I had no money. I thought to myself, well, I really want to go on to this program. So I sold my car in the space of one week. I sold my car and got four thousand pounds for it. I transferred it right across and said, look, take what I have. I've nothing else. I'll figure it out. Just teach me something. Back then, I kind of thought I wasn't really thinking of millions. I wasn't even really thinking about what my life is like today. But I just wanted a wee slither of it. I just wanted to just just a wee bit better. And uh, in that same week that I uh, sold my car, I also got a calendar and I closed my eyes. I put my finger on it and it landed on the 11th of November. And I decided I'm going to hand in my notice. Now, when you're 28 years old, you have a very good job that is hard to come by and you are broke and you don't know how you're going to pay your mortgage. The last thing that would be the logical thing to do would be to quit. So I know I still to this day, you know, almost go, wow, I really like went for it. And yeah, yeah, you and think, now, yeah, just a wee bit. And uh, that was the bit that was the start of the rest of my life. Yeah, and it was, you know, there's a couple bad. of things here, Kim. That, yeah, there's a couple of things here that I that I absolutely want to mark out because this this origin story, uh, yeah. is is you know what I was really hoping that would uh, you know begin to emerge in our conversation here. Uh, in, in my study today, I was reading uh, some Neville Goddard. And uh, there was a piece that I came across that I highlighted because I thought it might be appropriate for uh, our conversation today. Yeah. And I'll just literally quote this. The yeah. reason most of us fail to realize our desires is because we are constantly conditioning them. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about this, and, and folks, as you're listening here, I want to be yeah, there, there. There's an equivalency. There's a false equivalency that is drawn, I think, in most, most people's mind between contentment and happiness. Mm -hmm. And you looked around, and you, you know, your senses, you know, what you saw yeah. and what you heard, were people looking happy. Yeah. And the you know the the equivalency link was well, happy must mean you know content. Yeah. There was a stirring inside you that said, I am not content here at all. There, mm -hmm. This is where the soul comes in. You yeah. Know, the idea, something wants to emerge, something wants to be expressed, something wants to drive itself out. And awesome. we look around our world and we go, well, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to sell my car. <laughs> I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and most people will condition their desire by looking at the quote unquote reality around them. Yeah. I will do this when I will do that. If those huh. sorts of things, my experience of you and, the, and what I know about you and your story and, and how you've actually developed this company is mm -hmm. that you do not condition desire in any way, shape or form. No, it, when it, when it emerges, when it becomes you know, present in your awareness, mm -hmm. action is taken and it doesn't have to make sense. In many cases, it doesn't make sense. You yeah. Know, it just feels like this. And the word feel is really important here. Emotion is the uh, the language of the soul. Totally. So yeah. 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 So yeah. you went you went to Toronto, you took this program. Yeah. And yeah, you got connected with Bob. And mm -hmm. And you know, I could say the rest is history, but I want to yeah, not leave it there because the rest yeah. is not history. There's a whole lot of depth and richness in this. And those of you that are listening, you know, that are entrepreneurs, that are that are in a position where you, you're, you're kind of going, there's got to be more to life than what mm -hmm. I'm experiencing. I've, yeah. There's more to me that I'm exhibiting, that I'm, mm -hmm. that I'm actually uh, leveraging out here yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, this is not an easy journey. Yeah, it's it's it is fraught with doubt. It's fraught with uncertainty. It's fraught with fear. 
Mm -hmm. um, but and, and Bob in their programs talk about the terror barrier, you know, moving yeah. beyond this, oh my God, I'm going to die. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit, if you will, about some examples of how you've actually, and this is some of the stuff that you teach uh, mm -hmm. in, in your programs. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you work with people to get them past that naturally occurring terror barrier? Yeah. Well, I, I explain it just like that. It's natural. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost, it's a necessary part to growth. The thing is, we were just never taught that. We weren't taught that uh, in order to go beyond where we've ever gone before, we have got to think differently. We've got to feel differently. And for me, when I, you know, started to involve myself in, in the mental sciences of how we operate, it all started to make sense. Like even the questions and some of your viewers will ask those questions like there's got to be more. The question I ask you is, where did that question come from? <laughs> yeah, it has to have come from somewhere. So I take a lot of. um. I don't know if the word is a lot of peace or knowingness that when I ask these bigger questions and I, I ask totally different questions. Now. Back in the day, I used to ask questions like, what should I do? Yep. Or um, like kind of uh, how do I do this? Now I ask, who do I need to be in order to achieve this? And it took me a long time to really understand that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to terror barrier and fear, my desire is so much stronger. And desire, in my opinion, will always beat fear. And, you know, faith and fear both ask you to believe in something you can't see. And that brings me back to where did the question come from? Um, and when you talk about desire, we know desire is this unexpressed possibility seeking expression to and through us. And when I started to hear this, I think what, what for me was my ignorance actually worked for me. And what I mean by that was when Bob said, Kim, do this, do this, do this, and this will happen, I went, okay. I never really questioned it in my ignorance because in my mind, my back was against the wall. I was feeling, I burned the boats. There was no going back. There was no option. So when I'm teaching my clients or anyone uh, in this field, it's more about, okay, let's get back to the purpose of why you want to do these things. It's mm -hmm. the spirit. And I think love, without a shadow of a doubt, is the absolute currency that we should be working with. Level of vibrational energy, love. It's the most powerful energy. So for me, anytime I go for a stretch to go for a quantum leap, I just really bury myself and anchor myself in love and purpose. Because regardless of what happens, I know I'm following my purpose. I'm following and trusting and leaning on the spirit and energy that is within me, that is within everybody. And when you start to practice that and you start to lean on faith and, you know, walk by faith, not by sight, you start to get the reaction that then you kind of go, oh, okay. And that's where I just kept moving. I never yeah. stop. I still don't stop. I mean, I make decisions so fast. And again, it's something we hear taught. But until you've really went and implemented it and internalized it with your behavior, you really will never understand the power of it. Yeah. So for me, when you make that solid decision that you're going to do it, I don't give fear or negative thoughts a look in. And, you know, some people say to me, Kim, how, but how do you do that? And I, I honestly always go, I genuinely don't have time to, to doubt or worry. Like, I, like, genuinely, I am so focused and driven and disciplined that fear doesn't get in because I don't give it space. Yeah. 
And I think that's the key. If you really log into desire, it crowds out fear and doubt. There's a, okay. We're going to take a real quick break here. When we come back, that, that last phrase, when desire is so strong, there is no room for anything else. Mm -hmm. That's where magic begins to occur. Folks, we're mm -hmm. listening to Kim Calvert, um, the founder of uh, Dynamite Lifestyle. And we're going to be coming back here in just a moment and we'll pick this conversation up. I want to thank you for listening. Um, I want to also invite you right now to go to blainebartlett.com. And on that site, which is my personal website, you'll see uh, services up on the top menu. I'd like you to click on Leadership Mastermind. Now, why I want you to do that is we have uh, structured a mastermind program that is very unusual and it is very powerful. And by going onto that site and clicking that link, you'll be taken to a landing page that is an invitation to join this mastermind. It's a 52 week long exploration of what it takes to be a highly effective leader in today's fast changing environment. You won't regret it. And if you've been liking what you've been listening to on these Soul of Business podcasts, how does one become a leader that can keep connection to the soul of business? That's what we look at. That's what we're about in this mastermind program. So again, go to blainebartlett.com and click on the services link. And there you'll find the link to the Leadership Mastermind program. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for listening to this little commercial. And now back to our show. Welcome back. Um, you know, Kim, before we took that break, you had said something that I thought was fascinating. And I hope the listeners picked up on this. Yeah. And it answers the question, how do I, how do I overcome this terror barrier, this fear? Mm -hmm. um, and you said, look, you know, when the desire is so strong, there's no room for fear. Yeah. There was something else that you said there that I thought was really interesting. I don't have time for fear. Mm -hmm. And time as an illusion, and, and it truly is an illusion. When yeah. what I heard you say, and this wasn't specifically in your word, but it was in the way that you said it and the energy that was kind of present with it. Mm -hmm. When I'm saying I don't have time for anything else to approach, essentially what I'm saying is it's already here and I'm working with it right now. It's not out there in the future. If it's out there in the future, time can creep in and it's kind of like, well, I'll get to that tomorrow. Or yeah. the doubt can seep in between that gap between here and yeah. there. Totally. So acting as if it's present today is mm -hmm. one of the ways that I begin to eliminate the possibility of fear being an impediment, a mm -hmm. barrier to mm -hmm. anything that I'm doing. You know, yeah. Is that a fair assessment? You know, so it's a state of beingness. Totally. I mean, we time in my mind, as you say, I totally agree. It is an illusion. And I feel that what we see as time is just moments in the now all kind of added up. And I very much live in the moment, but I am very disciplined in where I give my attention and focus. So, mm -hmm. you know, to run a eight figure company now that I've developed, I don't, I can't, I'm not one of those people just kind of, okay, I'll sit back and I'm going to feel warm and fuzzy and it's all going to work out. I'm very about achieving my goals, but I do it from a place of they've already happened. So I'm actually, I'm thinking from the wish fulfilled in the now moment. Yes. And there's no greater feeling. It is the most powerful feeling and it, it's the effortless way, you know. It's, it's it's here now. I act, think, speak, and behave as if that were true. And it's not even an as if, because when I'm actually doing that, it's not an as if. It is true. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. 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 You you have accomplished some very interesting things in this, and it is a short six years. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you founded a company. And, mm -hmm. and I, I want you to talk a little bit about lifestyle, uh, sure. dynamite lifestyle here. Totally. The, yeah. the company you have structured this, and, and I talked to Bob about this a little bit before he passed. And mm -hmm. yeah, and he was so proud of you. I mean, mm -hmm. he was so proud of what you had accomplished, 
more importantly, he was so proud of the way that you served as an exemplar of the teaching that he you know, spent his life yeah, yeah, uh, bringing to people. You have structured your company in a way that Bob thought was going to be possible if somebody could really get on board with it. And yeah. um, so I'd like you to talk a little bit about some of the things that you've done, because some of it is very innovative. Yeah, you know, your 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 client facing you know, portal. I mean, you've got yeah. some stuff here that is just phenomenal. So, if you wouldn't yeah. mind, just a little bit about the ideation yeah. and through the uh, the the process of you know, where did yeah. it come from? Here's this idea. Let's leverage totally. it. Yeah, and and I think this is great for anybody watching because let's just remember, I had no business experience. That's where I was going. Yeah, you you can't be a business person. No business experience, no sales experience. I'm dyslexic and I can barely do math. So when you look at that on paper, that should not work. <laughs> However, again, it comes back to desire and love. And the three main core values that I've built my business on is transparency, integrity, and love. And I learned these core business you know, skills and, and, you know, ways of working from Bob, more from just observing as much as directly from Bob, like I, I really observe. And I had a deep love for Bob. In fact, in two days time, one year ago, I was over with him showing him what we had developed. So Dynamite Lifestyle, you know, it is an incredible company that helps people close the gap from where they are to where they want to go, looking totally fundamentally at mindset. Mindset being 95% where success comes from, 5% is from the strategy. And I, lo I love that because I knew, well, I don't have business strategies, but I also knew that I can create them. I, I can think my way into my results. And I also knew that I'm God's highest form of creation and I'm a creative being and I had this feeling of knowing that there's a purpose. So I really built my business on the premise of how can I waken people up one thought at a time? How can I make a huge impact on the world? I, I'm saying I built my whole vision for my company based on this impact I, I wanted to make on the world. And I think what Bob really did such a great job in it was showing me that it's not about me mm -hmm. and I still do not believe it's about me I believe that I am here with a purpose but I'm here for this energy to work to and through me and that has always been great because it allows me to have a, a beautiful ego balance of not going too into the ego but having enough to have the confidence to move forward um, so I really built my whole company. We're only a company of 13 people in one company, and that's Dynamite Lifestyle. And all of my team, all 13 of us, have no business background. Some of us were dog groomers. Some of us were nurses. Some of us were, you know, not doing anything. Some of us were engineers. And we've now went in six years to like tens of millions and an eight-figure company, but I'm still me. And if I want to be free, I've got to be me and I got to know who I am. And that was where I think we've done so well is that we come from a place of love and serving. And then I take that methodology and I really build it into how I run a business. I'd never been a leader. I'd never led anybody. But now I see myself as a fantastic leader yes. because I, I keep it about the spirit and I communicate my vision very well to my team. So when I'm running my company, we have a beautiful vision. Everybody's locked into it. I know every single one of my team's goals. I know their children's goals. I know everything. And we bring this together so we're in harmony. Um, and that has allowed us to really speed up and slow down and work in a very calm manner. Now, in the coaching, consulting, you know, industry, it's uh, growing vastly right now. However, I've seen a lot of gaps in the marketplace. I've seen a lot of struggles, um, you know, difficulty in actually fulfilling huge numbers and still giving quality service. I mean, the list goes on. 
And I knew Bob's vision and I knew my vision and I thought, I've got to create a new model and make the old obsolete. Bob knew that. And he, I think he knew, he planted a seed in my mind in 2019. <laughs> yeah. And he said, Kim, we were sitting in LA. He was eating, uh, I'll never forget it. Chicken I know Caesar. the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, he's eating his chicken Caesar salad with way too mm -hmm. much salt. And I'm sitting there kind of trembling. And he's like, Kim, I want you to think about something. And I went, okay. He says, how would you actually like, manage a hundred thousand people at one time and that was it and then he continued to eat and I thought hmm so I I took that question and I spent two and a half years answering that question I used Neville Goddard's work chapter two consciousness which really really brought to my mind that like that was my business textbook power of awareness mm -hmm. <laughs> And I studied this chapter for two and a half years because I knew there was something in it. And it was saying that if you really marshal in little ranks, everything will start to magnetize. And this started to make sense in the business world because we're living in a world where everyone's trying to get. And as Neville Goddard says, we have got to let it come, not thinking it flees away. And this really started to make sense to me. Okay, we need to magnetize and bring people into us not try and get because there's there's so much abundance and I then decided okay we're living in an era where media tech are the big things I'm young I'm going to really expand this and there's going to be a better and bigger way so I set up another company Dynamite Digital and long story short in the last two years we have now developed uh, a social learning platform that has quite frankly never been done in the history of where we're at right now. It's such leading edge. And this now allows me to serve my clients in a huge way, but keeping the quality. It's like the QQS formula from Think and Grow Rich. And, I, and then this is the beautiful thing. I was using these books as my business degree and I'm yep. putting it all together I'm listening intuitively to how I feel about it. When I was going down a path, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't always easy. There was paths we went down and it was, nope, abort, wrong path. <laughs> and the only way you'd know that is through the feeling. Yes. So I very much keep myself to myself. I study. And now what we've developed is, is something that everybody, even listening to this podcast, will hear about and it's called The Source, and it's our platform that we're going to be able to totally revolutionize the personal development industry with the sole aim to waken more people up. Yeah. And if folks, I want to just put a plug in here. I had the uh, privilege of uh, you know, experimenting and playing with uh, the platform a bit. It is crazy. It is <laughs> phenomenal in terms of what it enables. If yeah. you're in any way, shape, or form, uh, looking to build a community to work, you know, with your teams and have, I mean, the, I mean, forget about Slack, forget about you know, any of these other ways yeah. of working here. This platform is phenomenal. It, it mm -hmm. truly, it's elegant in the sense that it's easy to, you know, easy to access, easy to leverage. Yeah. And yeah. yeah and, it, and it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. it really is. It's, it's, it's a, it's a really well thought out design er ergonomically yeah. uh, and um aesthetically. Totally. And, and that's why we called it the source, because it is the source of all supply. It's everything in one place, because when it comes to business. And this has always been my thinking. I don't want to be a CEO behind a desk doing paperwork, having to have all these different uh, platforms all trying to connect to one thing. And it gets confused and your audience gets confused. It costs a lot of money. And I now have created something that allows me to really fulfill my purpose, which is to speak, which is to teach. And I think sometimes, you know, people in business, entrepreneurs, business owners, leaders, we get stuck in the businessy stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we lose the vision of why we did it in the first place. Exactly. And 
that's unfortunately where I'm going to have to bring us to a close, <laughs> but I think it's a great place. Uh, we, 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 I cannot count the number of clients I've worked with in the last 40 years that have lost connection to why they got into the business that they were doing to begin with. I uh, do a lot of work in the healthcare space with physicians and doctors and uh, the business of the business, you know, uh, trumps the mission that their heart is saying, I want to fulfill on this. Yeah. So uh, Kim, where can people find out more about, you know, Dynamite Lifestyles, about Source, about totally. you and the work that you're doing and your team is doing? Totally. I appreciate that. So guys, you can check us out at dynamitelifestyle.com. And of course, we'll be on every social platform, LinkedIn, Kim Calvert, um, you'll find us. So just pop us in Dynamite Lifestyle and I'm more than happy to help in any shape or form. Great. Folks have been listening to Kim Calvert and um, I want to just kind of emphasize one thing here uh, as we uh, sign off. Once Something that she said that uh, I have subscribed to for years and it's in the nature of questions. Yeah. Monitor the questions that you ask yourself as you start looking at the kind of life that you want to create. And the key question here is, who do I need to be in order to have this? Yeah. Who do I need to be in order to experience this? That's the question that will drive everything that you need to know about how to have what you want to have in your life. And for me, you know, one of the ways that I've decided that that answer is relevant is to position myself as a center of distribution, not as a center of accumulation. And I'll tell you, my life is just magically working as a consequence of that. I give away a lot of stuff. I give away most stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. come to my website, lanebartlett.com and uh, yeah, start, pretend it's Christmas and take what you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I will see you on the next episode of The Soul of Business with Blaine Bartlett. Take care and have a great day.